Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us all and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and lower our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, pass away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. You may be seated. And I'd like all of the family and friends who are here for the baptism to come on up here. Caleb, you've drawn a crowd this morning. That's good. We've got to get in business together. All right. So this is Caleb, and uh, his parents are going to introduce everybody. Go ahead. All right. We're on the horn. We got Anna, and we have Nate. Those are uh, friends of us, and they're getting married in a couple weeks. That's one of his grandmas. He looks a little nervous about this. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to look nervous. <laughs> we got Grandma, Sue Marinello. Uh, we have my sister Ashley, or Andy. Uh, great grandpa, Tony. We got uh, Uncle Patrick. We got cousin Brooklyn and godmother and Andy Murphy, my sister. We got great Andy Diel. Cousin Riley, uh, Nate Nicole, Uncle Jeff, Grandma Michelle, uh, my wife, Marie, this is Caleb, everyone wants to meet him. <laughs> I'm Jordan, and this is my father, Grace. All right, so come on in here, nice and close. Parents, you can stand right here. And everybody, and Dave, come on in. Nice and close, you get a good seat. Now, Brooklyn, I have a job for you if you will help me. Okay? This is a really important candle. Can you hold this? Thank you. <laughs> All right. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God meets us where we are and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for life in the world. Call. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you, that means all of you, do you desire, um, do you desire to have Caleb William on and baptized into Christ? If so, say we do. As you bring Caleb to receive the gift of baptism, you are so entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him through the word of God and to the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and to nurture him in faith and prayer, so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others and the work God made, and work for justice and peace. You promise to help Caleb grow in the Christian faith and life. Together, if so, say we will. We will. Amen. All right. To the sponsors. One of our sponsors cannot be here today, but he's here in spirit. Do you promise to love and nurture Caleb and be a part of his life, watch him grow and encourage him in his faith? If so, answer, we will. We will. Uh, people of God, 
Will you create a church? That's these people out here. Are you ready for this? People of God, will you create a church that is welcoming to children? To watch and encourage them to grow in faith, and so say, be well. Be yeah. well. Nice hearty response. Good. All right. Um, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Caleb, I baptize you. We baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. All right. There you go. Keep going on that. Let's pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain you with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Caleb, you have been sealed with the cross of Christ and marked with the Holy Spirit forever. All right, Brooklyn, are you ready? This is your big moment. We've got to light this candle. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, and the love of God be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Lord of the feast, you have set the prepared table before all people and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure. 
and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 25. O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old and faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, a fortified city, a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like the winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was still. Was still. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines stained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 23 responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in the green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, O Lord, and guide me along the right pathways for your name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. Second reading is in Philippians chapter 4. My brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and my cr and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way my beloved. I urge Eudoia and I urge Cynthia to be the name mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in your work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory 
Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and they went away, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets. Invite anyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So this is a wild gospel text, not one that uh, is easy to understand, and I hope I can do a decent job of helping you to understand what's going on here. So in this part of Matthew, what Jesus has done in the last week of his life is he has stormed the temple, overturned the tables of the money changers, uh, loosed all the animals, and made total chaos. And then the chief priests and the elders, the members of the Sanhedrin, they keep coming to him as he's teaching during the week that followed, hoping to catch him and trap him and maybe arrest him. But he's created quite a following of people, and they're afraid for their own lives that if they do something to Jesus, uh, they themselves will be turned upon by this crowd. And so Jesus tells these parables, and he, he's like a really good fisherman. How many of you like to fish? Right? How many of you do it anyway? All right? How many of you are really good at fishing? All right, I could, I could bring you up here and you could talk about fishing. Uh, one of the things you have to do is you have to disguise the bait so that the fish don't know that it's not real, right? I mean, if, if the fish can tell that what you have out there is not interesting to them, you don't catch any fish. So Jesus, in all of these parables, is kind of like a skilled fisherman. He kind of dangles something out there, and it plays on the fears or the hopes of these chief priests and these scribes. And then at just the right moment, he pulls the line back and he catches them in their own uh, misdeeds. All right. So he starts out in this parable with the idea of a king having a wedding banquet. Now, whenever you start a story out about a king, they're probably thinking the king is God. Okay. And so he has a wedding banquet for his son and people aren't showing up. They're saying, yeah, I'm too busy. I got stuff going on at home. I don't really want to. And this plays directly into the fears of the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Because in culture at this time, a transition was taking place. They were sort of at a crossroads. In years past, the culture was such that everybody came to the temple to receive forgiveness of sins, to get a new start for the next year, to worship and to give their money. And that was the way it had always been. But at this time, uh, people 
had less and less faith in the temple. One of the reasons was uh, the Caesar, the emperor of Rome, had constructed a statue of himself right here behind the big altar where they made the sacrifices. So he was sort of presiding over this. And as people came, it just didn't quite fill you with the same sense that it did when you believed that it was God Almighty somehow watching over this. And so culture started to change and people less and less were coming to the temple. This was very fearful for the scribes, the chief priests, the Pharisees. They all really survived on the wealth being generated by the temple and the importance of it. What was happening in its place were uh, itinerant rabbis. So somebody who was a, probably a Pharisee and was sick of the way the corruption of the temple would kind of branch off with what they knew and they would go from town to town talking about God and setting up synagogues which would be like a, a church kind of out and about and developing community groups and so it was changing so when Jesus talks about people being invited to come to the banquet and not coming Right? They feel like we got this because we are here and we are the ones inviting. And then the king gets really angry and he kills everybody who doesn't show up. Doesn't really sound like God unless you, uh, I mean, if you believe that about God. And so uh, they are feeling very justified in this parable. Finally, Jesus is saying something that we agree with. And then he pulls, you know, the Columbo. You remember the TV show Columbo? He'd kind of lay the facts out there and then he'd, he'd turn around and he'd get about here and he'd go, oh yeah, right? And he'd kind of add something and it would totally change everything. Uh, you can Google Columbo if you haven't, uh, if you have never seen that show. And so Jesus says, now when the king showed up, there was somebody that wasn't wearing the appropriate wedding garment. And he was approached, and they said, bind him hand and feet and throw him out into the night. Wow. So what does this mean? Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God. He was talking about this new movement that he was starting. Part of this movement certainly was the rabbinical movement and taking the temple power and authority and, and moving it out into communities. But also, it was characterized by a different kind of clothing. The temple authorities had beautiful vestments, some of them that would cost you your life savings what you could earn in one lifetime would be spent on on a robe for a priest to wear in the temple they had all kinds of money but there's a different kind of clothing that Jesus is talking about he's talking about being clothed with things like kindness and love so I'm going to give you an assignment right now, because I didn't really finish this sermon at home. I wasn't very good at sleeping last night. <laughs> I need you to come up with what are other clothes that are a part of the kingdom of God. I gave you two. One is kindness. One is love. There are no wrong answers unless maybe uh, hatred. Would, that's not an answer. Okay. So think about this. Uh, keep your mask on. You can talk to the person next to you if you came with somebody. What is another piece of this metaphorical clothing that is part of the kingdom of God? Go ahead.
Who's got one? Yes. Joy. Joy. Absolutely. The kingdom of God is full of joy. What else? Spirit. Compassion. Compassion, right? Compassion is a word that means with passion. So you got to be full of yourself, right? And be all in. Yes. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Absolutely. Being able to let stuff go. Leave it for somebody else to sort out. Conflict. Caring. Caring. Absolutely. Like a, like a little scarf of caring, right? What else? We'll take two more. Yes. Peace. Yeah, peace, right? What was the other one? Okay, we'll take three more. Okay, inclusiveness, generosity, Ava. Love. All right, so these are all the garments that are important in, in God's kingdom, in the kingdom of heaven. And then he follows that up by saying, many are called, but few are chosen. Well, here's the good news. You are all called, right? And Caleb, in his baptism this morning, poured water on his head. He was infused with the Holy Spirit. He was marked with the cross of Christ that will never wash off no matter what he does. Right? He has been called. But now, it's up to us to put on the wedding garments and attend the wedding. Up to him too. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church. Please stand. Let us pray for the church and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church with the spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, Protect your creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with um, dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious host, when we when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe us, clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us all your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Let us give the sign of peace to one another. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. 
You set before us these gifts in your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with the rich food and drink. And send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of your Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed are you who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which our Lord was handed over, he took bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is on my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. Hello, it's Pastor Tim here, and I'm here to invite you to join me in Holy Communion. This is part of our service on Sunday, and no matter when you are watching it, you can get uh, some communion elements and follow along with us. I will be uh, consecrating the elements in the service and through the miracle of television or the internet and the uh, mystery of the Holy Spirit, we will be consecrating your elements as well. So uh, I hope you will feel comfortable in joining with us uh, in celebrating this meal.
We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and the blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of our same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right, let us bless one another. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and lead you into the world. In truth and life. Amen. You may be seated. This last week we lost one of the great rock and rollers of all time, Eddie Van Halen. And uh, I'd like to do my tribute to Eddie Van Halen. Thank you, Eddie. All right, that was it, sorry. This is a song for our baptism. This little light of mine, I'm going to, come on, put me in Luther. You got to kind of loosen up just a little bit, all right? <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hiding under a bush, no, no, I'm gonna let it shine.